From Japanese Aikido to dwarf tossing in Australia, when it comes to sport, the world is anything but a global village. Half the planet is crazy about football. But in Austria, the most popular sport is alpine skiing, in Bhutan archery and in Mongolia wrestling. In the US, most people like American football, followed by basketball and baseball. Only few American sports fans watch football, or soccer how they call it. At glance at China, Table tennis and badminton are the most popular sports, followed by basketball and football. If you look at global statistics, football is unchallenged at the top with about 4 billion fans. But another ball game has turned into a lucrative and rapidly growing export hit, responsible for a billion euro deals in broadcasting rights and sportswear, basketball. The game is expected to have more than 800 million fans around the globe. Baseball, supposedly America's most popular hobby, is growing slowly compared to basketball in terms of viewership and revenues. Stefan Heuer lays out some explanations as to why in a story for German business magazine Brand 1. A complicated set of rules, hour-long matches, an endless season and a lack of superstars from different countries. Ingredients that make up a successful sport. Historically, baseball is a simple game of racquetball, which many cultures of the world have played in one form or another for centuries. One player throws, one hits, the others try to run to score points. Cricket sends its regards. But in its current form, baseball is anything but simple. The official rulebook of the Major League Baseball in the US has 188 pages and is about as exciting to read as the repair instructions of a portable radio. Hardly anyone immediately understands whose turn it is and when and what tricky moves each team makes to fill the bases with players and score points over nine innings. To make matters worse, each team plays 162 games in the six-month season, which means an average of 27 match days per month until the final round. This final round is incorrectly called the World Series, although only teams from North America entered. Sitting through almost one game a day for months requires a lot of patience, even from the most dedicated fans. The official MLB rules run 188 pages. Compare that to the NBA's rulebook with only 68 pages. The game of basketball explains itself. Two teams fight a battle, just like football or ice hockey. They try to bring the ball into the opponent's territory with rapid attacks to shoot hoops. Baseball fans consider the lack of excitement to be a great advantage of the sport. Sports journalist Stephanie Epstein wrote in Sports Illustrated, Baseball is best enjoyed as the soundtrack to something else. It's a perfect sport to watch as you catch up with a friend, as you read a book, as you drift off on a Sunday afternoon. A basketball game is different. The regular game has 48 minutes of playing time. With many interruptions, it can usually be an hour and a half to a maximum of two hours. And that's it. On the other hand, with baseball, you have to be prepared for at least two to three hours. One of the longest game ever in 1981 lasted eight and a half hours and was played over two days. Fans often turn the matches into tailgate parties, including a grill that they bring along and fire up right by their pickup's tailgate. Basketball is completely different. Simple rules on a compact battlefield, plus quick attacks and counterattacks. A game that sells well. The NBA recognized this early on and targeted one of the world's largest markets, China. Unlike other Western things, the sport was also popular during the Cultural Revolution. The NBA, therefore, explicitly invested in the Chinese market for decades. The breakthrough came in 2002, when the Houston Rockets signed Yao Ming of the Shanghai Sharks. He played for the Rockets for nine years and made them the most popular basketball team in China. The local marketing was tightly organized by the NBA. It set up a China division, including its own office in Beijing. The NBA installed about 800,000 baskets in Chinese villages to inspire the youth and sent well-known players on nationwide tours. The plan worked. In 2020, an estimated 300 million people are playing basketball in China. 10% of the NBA's revenues will come from there. By 2030, that number will double to 20%. The NBA has licensed its games and additional content worldwide in 50 languages. Nearly a third of its streaming subscribers are based in Asia. 
Between 2015 and 2020, the Chinese internet giant Tencent has paid $2 billion for the digital rights to basketball games that are watched by half a billion Chinese. No wonder that the co-founder of the Chinese internet company Alibaba acquired the Brooklyn Nets in 2019. Next, the NBA has India in its sights. In 2011, it opened its first office in Mumbai and signed an exclusive contract with the sports channel Sony 6 the following year. Popular US players are sent on promotional trips together with Indian pop stars. Social media is a way we've been able to infiltrate those markets very quickly with young people in particular living on social media, said NBA boss Adam Silva. Basketball is a money-making machine. The 30 teams in the NBA had sales of around $8.8 .8 billion in the 2018-2019 season, an average of $293 million per team. But the top teams earn much more. The New York Knicks came in at $472 million, followed by the Golden State Warriors and the LA Lakers. The NCAA's college championship games, which go by March Madness alone, a level below the NBA, brought in a good $900 million in TV advertising for the association and clubs. Each of the 30 teams in the MLB, on the other hand, brought in an average of $330 million in revenues. However, the teams have to compete almost twice as often as teams in the NBA, a full 2,430 times per season. This is why the association's total turnover is slightly higher, at $9.9 .9 billion. Basketball has one big advantage over baseball. Superstars that are known around the world. Dirk Nowitzki, Yao Ming, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Giannis Antetokounmpo and Luka Doncic. More and more basketball players come from abroad and therefore have fans all over the world. In the 2019-2020 season, there were 108 non-American players from 38 countries. The top basketball players in the USA are among the top earners in sport worldwide. LeBron James is in the lead with $37 million in salary and $55 million in sponsorship income, followed by Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. In contrast, the best baseball players are mostly unknown outside the US. This even applies to the players of big teams such as the New York Yankees, the Los Angeles Dodgers or the San Francisco Giants. Their sponsorship contracts are consequently smaller. Top earner Mike Trout, ever heard of him, of the LA Angels, has an annual income of $36 million, but he only earns an additional $3 million in sponsoring. Baseball has not yet managed to develop a market beyond North America and parts of East Asia. This also means that not too many people watch baseball outside those geographies. What's more, it limits the talent the league can attract as players. Even in the country of origin, the US, interest in baseball is declining. Fewer people come to the games and the World Series championship viewership has fallen continuously since 2016. In contrast, the Super Bowl was watched by nearly 100 million people in the US alone in 2020 plus 50 to 65 million people in around 130 other countries. More than 1 billion people watched the final of the 2018 World Cup between France and Croatia. Basketball is also ahead of baseball in terms of merchandising. If you get yourself a pair of shoes, a jersey and a ball, you can get started on one of the many courts around the corner, while baseball requires larger and more expensive equipment with a bat, glove and more. Not to mention a marked field, which is rarely found outside America. Accordingly, global sales of the sports shoes worn by basketball stars are high. Since the 1980s, the collecting mania has given rise to a separate subculture of sneakerheads, driven by Air Jordan shoes. In 2016, for example, the shoes of Steph Curry generated sales of $160 million, those of LeBron James another $150 million. The NBA changed the license holder for its official merch from Adidas to Nike in 2015. Nike paid $1 billion to the NBA for this and also has sponsorship contracts with numerous players. According to industry estimates, Nike controls around 90% of the American market for basketball shoes. Experts pack the global market for basketball accessories at $13.2 billion, that for baseball articles at only $8.1 billion. Obviously, the NBA is well positioned for the future. The number of spectators and revenues are rising. 
On the one hand, it is the fast and easy to understand game that is better to market than, for example, baseball. On the other hand, the NBA's expansive marketing plan to China and India shows that the spectator and revenue numbers will look good in the coming years. What do you prefer, basketball or baseball? And why? If you like our channel, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you love this channel, become a patron. Link is below this video.